Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everybody is having a great start to the week. I am not going to be uh, before you long this morning. I just want to talk to you about something and hopefully encourage you and point you in the right direction uh, as it pertains to something extremely important. Um, but before I do, I want to remind you, if you haven't gotten book number 21, book number 20, uh, Critical Mass, and I am, the links are in the box these books 20 and 21 are the first and second books in a six book series on personal development uh i'm excited about what i'm going to be bringing for my third installment but i encourage you if you want to nail down some specifics about your personal growth personal development personal empowerment these books are a great place to start i i obviously uh, there are some of you that I would absolutely love to love to work with on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So if you want to reach out to me, the, the the link or the email or the information you need to reach out to me about a one-on-one -on -one encounter with me is also in the description box. Now I'm going to move on and get to what it is I want to share with you here this morning. Uh, I was talking with a client earlier and we got into a conversation about a couple of things and the reality about perpetual suffering uh, came into play. And one of the things that I've said so many times is that while pain is inevitable, suffering is a choice. Suffering isn't the pain. Pain is inevitable. Everybody deals with pain. Everybody deals with hurt. Everybody deals with delay. Everybody deals with struggles and challenges. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you stand on the socioeconomic ladder. You are going to experience pain uh, throughout your life. Suffering is when you identify with your pain at a level at which you begin to expect pain to be your lot in life. When you give pain power, when you see your pain as inescapable, now you're in a place of suffering. And suffering is a choice because you can choose to overcome any obstacle. And so that's that. But one thing that came out of the discussion was how many people actually fail victim to the idea that time heals all wounds. One of the most erroneous notions that I can think of that impacts so many in society is this misconception that time heals all wounds. One of the things I, I discovered when researching the plight of blacks in America from slavery through current day uh, much of which is actually revealed in, oh man, here it is, revealed in this book, Born in Captivity. Much of that revealed to me that we have people at the time that I began the research, 125 years removed from slavery. Well, now we're 155 years removed from slavery. And there are still the remnants and the, uh, the residue of the trauma being perpetuated and passed down. And, and that's why you get so many people because of this erroneous idea that time heals all wounds. There are people saying, it's been 150 years, get over it. Well, we've proven through our perpetual existence that time doesn't heal all wounds. See, time doesn't heal wounds. If you don't create an environment for healing, if you don't actively participate in your healing, if you don't surround yourself with the people who are capable of helping you facilitate that healing, healing will not take place. Healing is an automatic thing that happens when time happens. You can look at people with different situations and, 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 and find that 
wounds don't heal just because of time now because wounds tend to heal in the collapse of time there's this concept or misunderstanding that okay time no time didn't heal it it healed over time but it had to be proper it had to be proper environment proper participation proper engagement proper planning you had to be in the right mindset your healing can be in affected by your mindset your healing can be affected by the people you have around you your healing can be affected by the natural environment the emotional environment psychological and spiritual environments your healing has to be given an ideal situation you got some people who will heal faster than others because of their mental state because of their expectation of healing and because of so many other things time in and of itself is not going to heal your wounds you're going to have to become actively involved in healing yourself you're going to have to become actively engaged in creating an environment that removes the toxicity that inhibits healing some of you are trying to get over a bad relationship that caused wounds but you are still in some way connected emotionally psychologically and even in some instances physically with the thing that caused the harm how is it that you can be in such an abrasive environment with the thing that caused the harm and expect healing to take place when you have opened up the portals of abrasion, abuse, and re-injury to the very thing that caused the injury in the first place? How can you heal when you have still mentally and emotionally given the power that you have within yourself? to the thing that harmed you. Healing cannot take place in that environment. Time does not heal wounds. Wounds heal over time, but there must be an environment for healing for it to take place. Prime example, somebody hits you with a baseball bat on your leg, breaks your leg. Under the right environment, your leg will probably heal depending on the damage within six to eight weeks. What happens if that person comes back or another person comes along and hits you in the same spot with a bat? Will the healing t take place in six to eight weeks? No. So what you expose that leg to over the period of time you're expecting healing will determine whether or not the healing takes place. Again, what I'm trying to get across to you is you've got to be actively involved in healing you've got to be actively engaged and aware of what's around you not everybody is conducive to your healing there are some people you have in your circle that are opposite of what you need they are contributing to the inhibitions of your healing and you're inviting them in and you're expecting just solely because it's been X amount of days, X amount of months, X amount of years that you're over it now. So you begin to pretend and behave as if you're over it because society expects you to be over it. So now you're pretending, but see, underneath the pretension is the reality. Pretending does not excuse reality pretending does not extract you from reality pretending is a facade that you put up around you that gives an impression to others and in in in, 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 in some ways to you that you are where you want to be the problem is the meantime all of the mechanisms of the true dysfunction are still operating underneath the facade so that at the moment the facade crumbles, you're in worse shape than when you were when you started. Healing requires an ideal environment. We find that in, in, in a physiological sense that when the ideal environment isn't intact, in, in Healing is corrupted. It may heal, but it may heal crooked. It'll heal, but it may heal short 
or stubby. It'll heal, but it won't have full functionality. It will have been robbed of much of its effectiveness because it didn't have the proper environment through which to heal in the first place. Thereby, it is so important whether we're speaking physiologically, whether we're speaking emotionally, psychologically, or spiritually, that when healing is necessary, that the environment is conducive to the level of healing you desire. The idea or notion that time itself heals our wounds is a notion in the area of laziness. See, when I trust time to heal me, it means I don't want to participate in the process of healing myself. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to sit up and wait on something else to do what I'm responsible for doing. And it's easy for me to keep saying time heals our wounds and waiting on it than it is to sit up and say, I've got to heal and start creating the proper environment for healing. So I want everyone to understand this, that it's going to be absolutely unequivocally up to you how you overcome the bumps and the bruises and the vicissitudes of life, how you overcome the challenges that are inevitable, how you overcome the pain that you cannot circumvent. It's going to be up to you. It's that simple. I'm going to get ready to get out of here. There's so much more I got to do. Uh, but I challenge you to live your life on full so that you die on E. That's my challenge. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.